Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel or welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Liz and this is Let's Get Lizical where we do everything card making. I'm going to start off this video by you know, speaking real time for a little bit and then I'll switch over to my voiceover afterwards. But I had a request this week to show my ink storage so I will show that and explain the card and then we'll get into it. Um, so this is my ink storage. It's just one of those um, like bead trays or um, embroidery floss trays. We used to use these for like making bracelets when I was younger. We used to get the like little cards to wrap your embroidery floss around and we would like stack them up in rainbow order in here. This is just from Dollarama. I think it was a couple of bucks, but I just keep all my colors in here and then I can pick them out. I also cut little quarter inch by one inch strips after I ink blended them onto the cardstock that I normally use, which is hammer mill cardstock, which is always linked in my description below. And so yeah, I just ink blended, cut them into little strips, and then taped them onto these ink cubes. And then I keep these ink cubes in here. They hold, I think it's 36 colors. So I have two of these because I have the entire set of the original Simon Positively Saturated inks. Um, they've come out with, I think, a couple of dozen more colors since then. But most of them are like more muted tones, m more greens and reds and like wine colors and stuff like that. Uh, I think there's one set that I want to get which is more blues and greens kind of thing. Um, but again, you don't need to have full sets of things. I did for these inks just because. Um, I do love these because they are water reactive so I get the, it's kind of like distress ink where you spray water on it, it activates the ink and then it leaves little dots or stripes or whatever. I did a video recently where I painted with water onto it. Usually I splatter water onto it for texture which is what we're going to do today and I think today we're going to use, I'm doing an ocean card. So I can either use, I usually this is like my most used row right here, which is the Seafoam, I call this the Seafoam Trio, and this is the Marine Trio? Yeah, the Marine. So it's Marine Cadet and Royal, and then Seafoam, Surf, and Ocean, which are like nice teal colors. I think today I'm going to use Uh, maybe these blues. So I think I'll use Marine, Cadet, and Royal. And then I'm actually going to need to grab my browns as well, maybe. Um, for the beach. So this is my other tray. Uh, it's not full yet. There's still enough for 12 more colors in here. And then I think for the beachy colors, we'll use Cappuccino and Latte. And I think that's it. So we'll use these colors today, and ta -da! we're going to use Lawn Fawn Swivel Surprise Set for today. Ah, uh, this is my very first interactive die that I have ever bought. Um, I know I sell 3D cards, like cut files, in my Etsy shop right now. Um, I will be moving those over to my website once I get that up and running. Not all of them, but I'll you know, keep some of them on there and maybe I'll do the 3D cards for sure. Um, but this is my first interactive die set and Lawn Fawn is king for those. So um, I just like saw the video. It's very fun to make. Um, I did a demo card. I recommend doing a demo card. Again, use whatever card stock you have that's left over. Um, colors you don't like to use very often. Maybe you buy packs like I do from Michael's, the 65 pound recollections card stock. Sometimes you want a pack of pinks or something, but you don't like a specific pink in that pack or whatever. Um, so usually I do that. This is some hammer mill card stock, I believe, that I bought that was the actually incorrect one because um, there's different types. This is still the 100 pound one, but it's like more flimsy and it's not as smooth as the other one so again down in the description below is the correct one but i did a demo one because i messed it up a few times and had to watch um hollow tree hobbies video from wednesday that kate did um because i put the glue in a wrong spot but 
Uh, I'll link that one below. But it's so much fun. It's hard to tell on the white how it goes. So it went once I assemble my card, it'll probably be a bit easier to see. But um, these all rotate, all three of these rotate. So this one kind of rotates when you open it. This one rotates this way. These two rotate to the right. This one rotates to the left. And then you get like dimension. Again, it's fairly easy to put it together once you put it together once. So again, recommending templates. Um, and then it comes with this banner die. I kind of cut this one up. This is the banner. You can glue it along the edge of this with like a sentiment. I made it smaller. I could show you guys how I did that a little bit later, but you can just like glue it there. You know, when, when you assemble the card, you want to assemble the card how you want it to be shown while it's open. Um, and then once you close it, everything will shift. But um, yeah, so make sure it's open when you're assembling it uh, with your images. Also, we're going to be using the Ocean Shelfie set today from Lawn Fawn. Um, I got this, by the way, from Hollow Tree Hobbies. I'm not sure if they have this. If they do, I'll link them both. If not, I will link this for Hollow Tree Hobbies and Lawn Fawn's website in case you want to order both because Lawn Fawn should still have this in stock. And if you want it in stock, you can probably reach out to Kimberly and she can probably get it as well. But don't quote me on that. Um, you can always reach out and ask. Uh, this little banner piece is actually the leftover piece from this and actually it's another because I think I cut out a bigger section here too But it's fun because then you get an arrow That points which is cool and then you can flip it Because this one rotates this way So if you wanted to you could just add like, glue it to that middle portion And then once the you, know, you open the card, you know, the arrow is gonna point the way it's going which is fun um, I have plans for this in the future and I want to see how I can modify it as well um, because of a few other ideas that I would like to do so stay tuned there will be more videos for this die set for sure um, coming sometime <laughs> I'll probably do a Christmas card for it at one point as well so now I'll just switch over to my voiceover and get started on the card Okay, so let's get on to this card. Hopefully there's no loud noises in the background, guys. I'm really sorry, but they're doing some kind of construction in our apartment building today. And they're outside cutting the grass, so that's what that humming is in the background, if you can hear it. Um, but anyway, so on to the card. We're using Lawn Fun's Swivel Surprise die today, which is super exciting. I just showed you guys how I attached a magnet to like their header card for this, and then it just holds all the dies there. I'm finding it much easier to add a magnet sheet to the original packaging and then adding the die to that. It doesn't even need to cover the whole background. It just needs to be enough to cling to a portion of the dies at least. Um, so you'll see that it didn't cover the whole thing. But anyway, on to the background. Um, well, this is actually the rotating pieces that go in the Swivel Surprise die. I'm coloring them with Simon's Positively Saturated inks in marine cadet and royal as mentioned before and i'm just ink blending a gradient background and we're going to splatter this with water after for some texture and then i'm going to use those circle dies and we're going to use those on the inside and the outside i do another one for the outside of the card later because i remembered i was going to do it i was a little disorganized with this card like i knew what i wanted to do but i didn't have all the things with me I had to do quite a few edits where I just kind of like left my desk to go pick up some stuff. <laughs> um, but with this, I would suggest potentially uh, including a second layer of these. They do get a little flimsy. This is just the hammer mill cardstock. It's not watercolor paper. So it, it will take the water, but it not as well as a watercolor. Um, so I would recommend you know, cutting an extra white layer to go behind it if you're going to be doing this type of technique. I ended up doing it after the video was done, but I cut a second layer for the middle ring, and then I just kind of cut a slit into it so I could wrap it around the mechanism, and then I glued it in place on the back of the ring. The other ones were okay, so I left them. 
And right now we're just going to uh, ink blend that latte and cappuccino ink on the inside. I kind of made my own stencil with some Hills dyes I have. I believe these are also from Lawn Fun. Um, but I just wanted to like kind of ink blend some like ocean floor sand kind of thing on the inside. We're not going to be stenciling this whole piece, but it kind of like gives it the look, right? So uh, what I'm doing is I'm just going, you know, light to dark again, making a gradient, and then I'm going to splatter some of the darker cappuccino color, which is what I'm doing here. I'm putting that back in because I think it just adds that little bit of texture that sand needs. And I'm just going to splatter it with a little brush here. It does kind of like blend in a little bit because again, these inks are water reactive. So if you add water to it, it's going to change the color. Um, but it still works as texture and I wanted to do this before I folded the card base so that I didn't end up with that line in the middle um, because like when you're ink blending the crease in the center of the card it will like pick up a little bit more of that ink so it'll be a bit darker and I didn't want that so I made sure to leave my card without the fold and then added the fold after and I actually realized once this card was done i didn't cut it to a proper a2 size for some reason um it's actually measuring four and a quarter by five instead of five and a half which i didn't notice until i grabbed an envelope for it to take photos for this uh video so you know it's a little bit shorter than a standard a2 but with all of the bulk that goes on the inside and i added foam tape to the circle on the outside it just it actually fits in the A2 card uh, envelope pretty well. Um, so if you do want to fit this into an A2 envelope, it again is a little bit of a bulky card. It's not too bulky, but it really depends on how much layering you want to do and how many pieces you want to put into it. Um, I would recommend maybe cutting it a little bit shorter as well. Maybe not down to five, five and a quarter even would help um, just give the card a little bit of extra space in the envelope or if you have the envelope punch board you could always make your envelopes a little bit bigger. I find that the measurements for the four and a quarter by five and a half envelope are a little bit too big anyway um, so I have different measurements for those when I do make my own. It's like a quarter of an inch difference it's not too much different but um, it does make a difference to me because I do like my envelopes to be a little bit tighter the cards it just it's a little um, less room for error, I guess, in the mail. Like, it's enough, nothing's gonna bend or anything. And sometimes when I mail cards, I will actually put a sticker on there that I've pre-printed that just says do not bend on it to make sure that they don't. Like, they're standard size cards, so they shouldn't, but I just put it on there as a precaution. Uh, but back to the card, I've ink blended um, on that other panel so that I could cut another one of those stitched circles for the front of the card. Now I'm doing the mechanism. I'll also link Kate's video on Wednesday for Hollow Tree Hobbies as well. She did a really good job on this. I slowed this down. This is real time right now. And I'm just going to show you how I fold it because I fold one step slightly differently than Lawn Fawn's video as well. Um, but you're going to fold that top tab towards the back as well as these diagonal pieces. Fold them both um, and score them. And then the next one they also fold to the back, but I fold this one to the front. It just helps you get those pieces to like push in a little bit easier because that's the way it's going to fold anyway at the end. So I don't know why they would fold it to the back to fold it in. It's easier to fold up to fold in because then you can see like how easy this is just to like push those little pieces inside and then smush it down. Um, so I found that, that that was a bit easier for me and I'll probably do it that way going forward. Then I'm just gonna use my bone folder to reinforce that and I'm gonna show you again. You just wanna push the inside and then fold it so that it comes to like a little arrow point. And then there should be this little piece that sticks out at the bottom there. And then I'm just gonna use a highlighter to show you where the glue will be going for all the various pieces. So this top one is the smaller circle at the top. This straight piece here is for the card attachment at the back. The one on the left there is for the card attachment to the inside front and the bottom one is for the center ring. And I will show you how to glue it in now. So you want to put glue on that bottom piece first, fold it 
out and then put it towards the middle of your card, which is what they recommend in Lawn Fun's videos, but you can kind of move it down a bit. I would say like the middle of your card is probably about where you want it. Like you see where that like knife top, knife like shape t at the top there, as long as that is within the card and then the bottom, same thing. Like I could probably move this down like another half an inch or whatever and still have space for it. I actually measured this after and it measures, I think four and an eighth when the mechanism's like at its fullest, um, which is this right here. Uh, so you could fit this into an, a four and a quarter inch squared card. It would just be like a tight fit. I might try doing it in a future video just to show you guys. Um, but you can put this in different size card. Like I said, this one's a half inch shorter anyway than what it's supposed to be. And it fits in here fine. And then this one, I'm cutting out that front circle that I'm adding. I'm just using the stitched circle. It's like an inside out stitch circle. I didn't cut properly at the bottom there. My, I keep saying, I keep saying I need to replace this plate. Uh, the magic mat one. I have a brand new one. I just keep grabbing the old one. <laughs> it does leave little fuzzies and it is getting old, but I really do need to replace that. They actually have new magnetic ones that I'll probably order soon, but I'm waiting for some honeybee dyes to come out as well. Um, and then I'm using the Lawn Fawns Ocean Shelfies, as mentioned before, and I'm just making them fit onto this little piece of paper. I was a pattern maker and marker maker at my last job, so I kind of know how to fit pieces together and try. I don't want to go wasting paper. I hate doing that. I'm not going to grab a new sheet just so I can stamp these because I'm going to use this eventually for something else anyway. And then I'm just going to color these and I will play some music for you guys to give my voice a rest and because I'm just coloring. <laughs> Everything has been colored and cut out with my scan and cut. Now I'm just adding a few highlights. If you're still here, thank you guys for sticking around. This video is a bit longer today, more reminiscent of my earlier videos, <laughs> but um, this card is a little intricate and it does take time to put together and then, you know, fill the space. I would still say that this is a fairly like simple card. Um, because there's like really not too much going on. Like I didn't ink blend the entire card. Maybe one day I'll do like a fully ink blended decked out card, but we'll see. <laughs> um, are you guys even like into longer videos or do you prefer them short? I know sometimes we don't always have the time for longer videos, but 
me personally, I watch YouTube on my TV most of the time. So I kind of watch it like I'm watching a TV show at times. Like, like I love Jennifer McGuire videos because her videos are usually between 20 to 45 minutes. So like I like the longer format and she usually like jam packs a lot of stuff in there. If it's longer than like I would say an hour, I'm usually not interested in watching it. Um, but like Christina Warner will do live videos or whatever and then she does a shortened version. I always watch the shortened version for those um, because the live would be like way too long. But let me know your thoughts on that, guys. Um, anyway, <laughs> here I am assembling the card. I put the three that face sideways on the front and then put the sentiment smile. And then on the inside, I'm putting all the ones that face forward. Um, and I'm going to put the sentiment hugs on here. And I'm only putting it in here because I wanted to show you guys how I cut the uh, like circle banner a bit smaller. And... This is me showing it now. So I have the full size one cut out and then I'm just kind of like lining it up inside the same area, but like shifting it so that it's like halfway. You can move it to whatever portion you want. You just want to make sure that it fits within the die cut lines. This is the little arrow that's left over. I was debating on using this one, um, but I end up using the other portion that cut off and then I'm just going to stamp this little hugs on there. I probably could have cut this one a bit smaller. Sorry for my head here, guys. It's very hard to line up. I didn't end up bending this one because it's not big enough to bend, but you can kind of slightly bend your sentiments. You just put your clear block over the banner and bend it uh, slightly to fit in the area. This one was pretty straight, but it was okay because it was such a small area. And then I just kind of extended the H. It is kind of like a little wonky because I think it's supposed to look kind of like ocean wave kind of thing. But yeah, so that's pretty much our card for today, guys. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below and let me know your thoughts. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and follow me over on Instagram because I post some more extra things on there sometimes. Also my Facebook, all Let's Get Lizical handles, so easy to find. Um, but yeah, so until next time, guys. Thanks. Bye.